Okay, now I'm just going to shake the outside of the bowl. And again, what I'm doing is I'm moving the bit of wood. I'm not moving where I'm axing, I'm moving the bit of wood. Yeah. And you want to try and get rid of as much bark as possible because it can be very deceptive of, of what's actually there. But we're basically just uh, getting the basic shape of the bottom of, a, of the bowl of the spoon. Okay? And now I want to start working at the handle. So actually now we can see we've got a much smaller bit of wood but the handle's a lot a lot longer than we want it. So we probably want it about there. Okay. But we can saw that off in a bit. Um, so we'll take off the thickness from the back, doing those stop cuts, okay, then a steeper an angle and clearing those off. Trying to leave a nice clean cut. The reason you want a nice clean cut is A, the next cut you do is going to be more simple. But each one of those scars is going to send a crack going down along the fibres. So you don't want to leave that and then come along to your finished spoon and then find that actually you've got a crack going all the way down. So you want to try and remove those as quick as you can. I'm leaving quite a thickness there where the neck of the spoon is going to be thin to keep it stronger. Okay, so we start axing in there now. I might might try and um, just remove some of that. It would be probably quicker to saw that off, but um, I don't have a saw in my hand right now. So well, that was pretty quick. <coughs> so that's probably better length for our spoon. Mm -hmm. Right, now working in uh, to shape the bowl. You can see that's sending the splits down. So the axe, the, the good thing about the axe is because it's heavy tool, it will get across the fibres quite quickly, okay? Which is the difficult part, using a blade. So you want to do as much of that as you can with the axe. But the wood wants to split along the fibres, okay? And we try and use that to our advantage. Um, but if you want quite a fat handle at the top, you've got to be careful you don't do, lose too much of that. So we're going in one way, we flip it over and come back, come back the other. Okay, and uh, I'll do the same on this side. Trying to make it even. Okay. You've got to be very careful. If you follow through too much and hit lower down, it will want to split all the way down the fibres. So you've got to be very careful of that. So I'm just continuing the shaping basically. Coming back from both sides. And I'm leaving leaving the option open of having quite a fat handle at the top. And now I can start thinking a bit more about the design. I don't want it that fat. So I'll shape that off a bit. Maybe round that off a bit towards the top. And trying to keep it equal-ish either side okay so that's starting to look spoon-ish um, I could do with taking off a little bit tidying up the handle a little bit and maybe thinning that down so I think I'll just do that now and as part of the design I like to have that coming down at a bit of an angle so I'm doing that and you can see that I'm holding the axe choked right up the neck for more control, okay? So for a power cut, you're holding it down here, more leverage, more control, hold it right up the top in little cuts. And if I look right down it, then I can see exactly the angle I'm going. Okay, so these cuts, I'm going with the fibres, not, not going across them. That's created a bit of a bevel on there. Um, now there is a lot that you can do with the axe. Um, we could continue the shaping a lot, but I think in terms of explaining things, it's probably best to start uh, doing a bit, bit with the um, bit, bit with a knife. But you can continue just taking these edges off. Um, you can see there that actually we've used the shape of the bit of wood quite a lot for the bottom of the bowl there. If that was a flat bit of wood, we would have had to have done more shaping, but because it was half a round bit of wood, you've got quite a lot of the bowl there already. Uh, but that's spoonish shaped, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I probably... could already use that as a spatula for cooking, couldn't you? Yes, you certainly could. Yeah. yeah you could. Uh, I mean, you knock that up in a, a few minutes if you needed something to quickly stir your pot with. Oh yeah, definitely. In terms mm. of bushcraft, if you're you're out in the woods, then you just grab a branch. I mean, to be honest, I'd probably just grab a branch and just start stirring. But mm. you know, cleave it down the middle, take the bark off. You're not going to have any dog shit on the inside of a bit of wood, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So. Uh, Safety, we put the axe sheath back on because this is quite a sharp axe because it's for carving. Um, and uh, we'll go back to the tools and start carving with our knife, I think. Right, firstly, I've, I've already said about keeping that thickness there. We're going to go quite a lot thinner with the knife there, and for it to have any strength, it needs to have a bit of a keel. Um, you want, you want it to be comfortable to hold, there's lots of different ways that you could do that. In terms of the bowl, you don't want it too thick if it's an eating spoon, which this is going to be. You want the, the wood to be quite thin where you're going to be putting your mouth to it, and it needs to be quite smooth. Um, and often people make them far too deep, and that, that's okay for a kind of soup spoon, but if you want to be eating your everyday kind of stew or whatever, then that's not going to work that well. So, right, knife. Um, we've got a high carbon steel knife here and uh, I'm just going to hold it straight like that and start whittling away. I should have got rid of the bark first because like I said it can be deceptive, often it's quite thick and um, once you've removed it it may well change the shape of what you've got quite a lot. Um, so I'm just going to continue shaping the bottom of the bowl um, and I'm just holding it in my left hand, I'm making sure no one's in my way, I've got a good firm grip and uh, I'm just trying to get nice long shavings um, and removing material. Each cut I do, I'm thinking, right, where do I need to remove material from? So we just take off quite, quite a lot of material from the corners, like that. Trying to keep it smooth, smooth curve. And then that should make a nice shape on the top. Um, the two main knives that I'm going to use for the shaping the outside are both frosts. Um, I think I spoke about them earlier, but uh, they're both high carbon steel. This one's actually a laminated blade, but you can see this one's a bit thinner. Um, so you can do, get into concave shapes more easily. Um, and it's obviously shorter as well. So for some of the knife grips, um, sometimes I'll pull the knife back towards me like this and having a long blade can feel quite dangerous whereas a shorter blade you feel like you have a little bit more control. I'm going to use what's called the chest lever grip um, so instead of having it that way round you have it that way round. So okay. the blade facing towards you? Yeah I mean there, there's many variations I normally hold it like this you can hold it towards that knuckle with your thumb on the blade like that but it's basically using your chest and your arms um, and almost like a backhand in squash uh, or, or tennis. So I guess in tennis you keep your arms straighter, but you, you're almost using your wrist muscles away like that um, just to go across. The so good thing about that is it's a powerful cut with a lot of control. Okay, The control comes in because you can stop it. You've also got a lot of leverage coming out of the wood so you can control how far along the grain it goes. But the other thing is it's nice and close to your eyes so you can see exactly what you're doing. Um, and I'm just going across there. And actually, having said moving on to a shorter blade, the longer blade would be easier for getting across the whole of this bit of wood because you can see this one only just gets across. Once we flatten that off, we've got most of our shape there. If we actually now just put a bevel on the rim, bevel at just kind of 45 degrees, you'll see that it should be, we should have created a bit of a nicer curve coming towards the top. We actually want to create the rim now that we're actually going to use for the spoon. Now a lot of spoons won't be symmetrical. A right-handed spoon will have a slightly rounder edge there. Now people often put that on because they've seen old traditional ones and it's just because when they've used it in the bowl it's just worn away slightly. But that wants to be the shape of the bowl that you're going to use to eat it because you can scrape around it. 